Hello everyone! I'm travelling around on a very special fun bus today. This double-decker bus has been transformed into a soft play party bus. This is Paul and he's the driver of the bus. He drives to lots of different places for children's birthday parties. You can have a party anywhere! Here comes the bright yellow party bus now. Welcome aboard the party bus. There are two floors on this bus. A downstairs and an upstairs. Let's climb the stairs and take a look upstairs first. Whoa! It's so much fun up here. There's a tunnel. A rope bridge. These are called biffers and bashers. Hey, Red Mechanical, how did you get in here? Red Mechanical never misses a party. To get down, we can either go back down the stairs or we can go down the mega green slide. Go on, Red, you can test it out. Woo! When you come down the green slide, you land in a colourful ball pool. Look! Red Mechanical is holding a green ball. This is an orange ball. And here's a purple ball. The fun doesn't stop there. Downstairs, there's more places to run around and climb. Paul's getting the bus ready for a party, so it's time to connect the bus to a generator. A generator is something that uses fuel to generate electricity. That means Paul can turn the disco lights and music on in the bus. Here come the kiddies now, ready to party. Running round the play bus, everyone's very hungry, so it's time for some party food. These tables upstairs are just right for enjoying some sandwiches. Paul places yellow paper plates on the table. One, two, three, four, and again. One, two, three. Four yellow paper plates. Now Paul is placing down orange drinks. One, two, three, four. And they need red straws. One, two, three, four. Four red straws. Yum, yum. Before everyone leaves, there's one last thing to do. Give out the party bags. We can't have a party without party bags. Phew! After all that excitement, I'm ready for a lie down. Thanks very much to Paul for showing us around his fantastic double-decker party bus. 
We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone, Gecko here, and I'm on a rescue mission. It seems Blue Mechanical's gone missing, but luckily for us, the brilliant Cheshire Police Force are going to help us find him. Police officers are very brave, and their job is to keep everyone safe and sound. This is Scott, he's a police officer, and he's going to be driving us around today in this amazing police car. Hey Gecko, when did you last see Blue? I haven't seen him for a few hours now. I'm really worried. Hop in Gecko, and we'll radio the control room to see if they've had any sightings of him. Scott can use his police radio to talk to other officers when they're far apart. There's a whole team of people behind the scenes who are there to help Scott do his job. Control from Hotel Tango. Have you had any sightings of Blue Mechanical? He's gone missing. Yes, we've had a report of him. Sending you his location now. Over. Phew! That sounds like good news. I do hope Blue is all right. Before we set off, Scott presses this button to turn the flashing lights and siren on. And away we go. Sirens and flashing lights are used to help cars all around see and hear the police coming. It's so drivers can get out of the way and let the police through. And look here, they even have a pop-up sign in the back asking drivers to slow down. Scott is a traffic officer which means he drives around in this fantastic police car. But Scott, what exactly does a traffic officer do? Our job on the roads as a traffic officer is to stop people doing dangerous things in their cars and their motorbikes and trying to keep people safe on the roads. Sometimes Scott and the team have to chase naughty people or get to those who need help. So this car is really fast. And because the police are here to keep us all safe, they're even allowed to go through red traffic lights during emergencies. Look, there he is. Blue, we were so worried about you. Are you okay? Blue, it's very important never to go off by yourself. You might get lost. It can also be very dangerous going this close to the water without a grown-up. Remember, you can't swim, Blue. Come on, Blue, hop in. We'll give you a lift down to the station. goodness Blue's safe. These amazing cars that helped us find Blue take a lot of looking after too. When we get back to the station, let's head round to the maintenance unit and take a look. A maintenance unit is a bit like Gecko's garage, but this one just looks after police cars. What do you think Blue? Pretty cool, huh? Now stay out of trouble whilst I have a look around. Connor's checking the oil. And Pat is changing a tyre. It's important to keep the oil topped up in a car, as it makes things slimy and wet, but not in a horrible gooey way, as it actually helps. See. If things start to go dry, like when we have a sore throat, then lots of engine parts become damaged, and then these ace cars won't work properly. 
This is Tim, and he's a mechanic here at the Police Car Maintenance Unit. Hey Gecko. What are you doing today, Tim? I've checked this vehicle over to make sure it's safe to drive. We'll start by doing the lights. Right, Tim, you've got some lights out. OK, we better fix them. That's better. <laughs> Ouch! Blue, are you okay? <laughs> to get a better look underneath the car, the mechanics can use this really strong hydraulic lift to raise it up. Hey, guys, can you drop it down a bit? I can't see. Okay, come and just send the ramp down. That'll do there. Look, underneath you can see the exhaust system, which is how the car controls lots of things, like how noisy it is and how much fuel it uses. It also carries dirty fumes from the engine towards the back of the car. And see here, these springs are called the suspension. This makes the ride along the road less bumpy for the passengers. Wow! There's just so much cool stuff hidden underneath a car. I've loved learning all about this amazing police car and the amazing work that the police do to keep us all safe. Thanks very much to Scott and all the team here at the Cheshire Police. For now, it's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Hello everyone! Today we're learning all about these helpful little forklift trucks. Forklift trucks are used in all sorts of different places, like factories and warehouses. They can lift and move things that are too heavy to be lifted by people. And they can reach much higher than we can. This is a training centre where people are taught how to drive forklifts. And my friend Florence has come along to get some tips too. This is Robbie and he's a forklift truck expert. So today he's going to show us all of the amazing things that these vehicles can do. Welcome to FLT Gecko, are you ready for your training? Oh yes Robbie. With all of these forklifts whizzing around it's important to stay safe. To make sure everyone can see me, I'm wearing this bright yellow high visibility jacket. With this on, I'll certainly stand out. It's called a forklift because of these two big forks on the front. They're super strong and can lift very heavy things. Shall we see just how much a forklift can pick up? Okay, Florence. You go first. Can you lift me? Woohoo! I'm so high! OK, you can put me down now. Thanks, Florence. Can you lift five mechanicals? One, two, three, four, five. Well done, Robbie. Florence, can you lift Mabel and her family? Careful they don't swing off you. Woo! Oh, wow! Robbie's going one better and lifting up a rhinoceros. He looks heavy. These forklifts can lift an impressive one and a half tonnes, which is the weight of this large rhino. A forklift has lots of different features to make it the perfect lifting vehicle. Robbie, 
Can you please show us how to drive a forklift truck? Well, Gecko, it's quite simple. We have two pedals I need to use. One's the accelerator, second one's a brake. Use the accelerator to go and brake to stop. I have the steering wheel here. I turn it left, it'll go left. I turn it right, it'll go right. All I do is press the middle of the steering wheel for the horn. Oh, sorry, mechanicals. Did I scare you there? <laughs> These three levers control the all-important fork. Robbie can use this lever to make the forks move up. And down. Up. And down. He can use this lever to move them left. And right. Left. And right. And he can use this lever to tip them forwards and backwards. Forwards and backwards. These are called pallets, and they are the main things that forklifts are designed to lift and move. Some things are far too heavy or too high up to pick up with just your bare hands. So this helpful forklift does the job. The forks fit perfectly into the pallets, which have heavy objects on top of them. Robbie then lifts the pallet up and carries it where it needs to go. Sometimes they need lifting back onto the high shelves. I know I couldn't reach up there. Normally vehicles are steered using the wheels at the front. But look! It's the wheels at the back that are turning. Wow, look at them whiz and spin around that course. It almost looks like they're dancing. Here comes the fall. He's so clever, moving the parts around the store. Here comes the forklift, it goes forever. They put them down upon the floor. He turns to the left and reaches high. He turns to the right as he passes by. Forklift picks up things from down, down low. It's super strong and it can go, go, go. Show them what you can do, forklift. tiring work having all this fun. It looks like these busy trucks have run out of energy too. Look at that. Robbie's flipped open the forklift, like opening the lid on a box of toys. All of these trucks are powered by electricity. Robbie plugs them into the main power supply so the batteries can recharge, ready for another day of lifting carrying and moving. Thanks to Robbie and all the team at FLT Liverpool for teaching us all about these hard-working forklift trucks. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Can I get down now, Robbie? Robbie? Robbie! Hello everyone! Gecko here! 
I'm here at Wigston Fire Station to meet a vehicle that's a really big deal. Hold on to your hats, because here it comes. Woohoo! That is the cutest fire engine I've ever seen. This is the mini fire engine and it's used by the amazing firefighters here to teach children all about fire safety. This is Kane. He's a firefighter and the driver of this mini fire engine. It's got all the usual things you'd expect on board. Flashing lights, a siren and a ladder. All in an itty bitty teeny tiny size. But best of all, it's got plenty of room in the back for children to have fun rides. Look at that! There's a pretend radio for making emergency calls. You can really see just how small the mini fire truck is when it's parked next to its big sister. This fire truck is big and this one is small. Hey Gecko, want to go for a ride? I thought you'd never ask. Yes, please. The mini fire truck is powered by electricity. That means it's got a big battery on board that can be charged overnight. It's very easy to drive. Kane just puts his foot on the pedal and steers with the steering wheel. To turn on the flashing lights and sirens, he presses these buttons. Woohoo! We've arrived at the park. Kane, I think these children would like a ride. That's it. Get your special firefighting kit on. Jump aboard. Wow, we can fit loads of children in the back and even one in the front next to Kane. It's very important that you're safe in any vehicle, so the first thing you should always do is put your seatbelt on. This fire engine is so small that it's allowed on roads and footpaths. This is going to be a fantastic ride. Wave hello to everyone. After the ride, Kane teaches the mini firefighters some important fire safety lessons. This one's called Stop, drop and roll. Fire is very dangerous and if there's ever any fire on your clothes, you should stop, drop to the floor, cover your face and roll around. I've loved spending the day with this amazing mini fire engine. Thanks very much to Kane and all of the team at Wigston Fire Station. For now, it's cheerio from Gecko. 
Bye. Hello, everyone. Whoa, look at that. That isn't just any bus. That's a double-decker bus. Look, there's a downstairs and an upstairs. I'm just waiting at a bus stop for the next bus to arrive. All you have to do to catch a bus is put your hand out like this and the bus will stop. This is Brian and he's the driver of this bus. He sits in a place called the cab. Here it comes now. Brian presses the red button and the doors fold open. This bus is special because it can move up and down to let people get on more easily. Red Mechanical, where have you been on this bus? You've been playing in the junkyard? Oh well, I hope you had fun. Come on, let's get on board. You can fit up to 75 people on this double-decker bus. I think I'm going to sit upstairs to see the lovely views. Woohoo! I can see everything up here. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long. Here we are back at the bus depot. I'll just press the bell to ask the driver to stop. Shall we have a closer look at the controls here in the cab? The driver can press all sorts of buttons to make things happen. This button controls the sign on the front of the bus, which tells people where the bus is going to. This is the ticket machine. And these screens are connected to cameras so the driver can see the passengers upstairs. These buses travel all over the city, so they sometimes get very dirty. Shall we put this double-decker bus through the special bus wash to give it a clean? It's time to use the water and brushes to clean our double-decker buses. Through this truck wash, our bus will crawl. Have you ever seen a bus so tall? Look at that, clean as a whistle. Where do you think the engine is in this double-decker bus? Surprise! It's here, right at the back. And these buses are special because they run on electricity and diesel. When the bus is going slowly, and picking up people from bus stops, the bus uses an electric motor. This makes it much quieter than other buses. Just be careful not to fall asleep on your way home. But even these buses need to be repaired sometimes. Instead of bringing them to Gecko's garage, they're brought here, to the Arriva maintenance garage, where expert mechanics can repair them. Look how many buses are being worked on at the same time. This bus is having a wheel changed. And here's another bus driving into the garage. It drives in and parks over a big hole in the floor called the pit. If there's something wrong underneath the bus, a mechanic can go down into the pit and fix anything while standing underneath. Or they can use a giant hydraulic lift to lift it up and make it even taller. When everything's fixed on the bus, it's time to leave the garage and go back out onto the road to take more passengers where they need to go. I've loved learning all about double-decker buses today. We'll see you again soon. Bye!
if you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.